Welcome to chapter 7. Welcome to skin and body temperature. This is a cool, cool class. So let's have a look here. Um, We're going to be talking about there the seven functions of the skin. We're going to discuss the structure of the skin, including the two layers, the epidermis and the dermis. We're going to talk about the... There's a whole bunch of layers there, uh, whether you're talking about thick skin or thin skin, but well, we're going to talk about all these kinds of layers of the skin. List the factors uh, influence the color of the skin. Uh, we're going to describe the hair, nails, what we call these accessory glands. We're going to define uh, thermal regulation and body heat, lossing, losses and gains. Um, differentiate between insensible and sensible perspiration. So let's have a look here, shall we? So functions of the skin serves as a mechanical barrier, protects internal structure, participates in the immune response, acts as a gland for vitamin D synthesis. We get our vitamin D there from the sun, right? I think you need to be out there for about 20 minutes and you get all the vitamin D there that you need. Uh, performs uh, excretion. You wouldn't think that the skin does this, but it does. It's a massive source for getting rid of things from our body. Sensory and thermal regulation. So let's have a look here. Skin has three main layers. There's the epidermis, which is the outer layer. Okay, completely dead. Your, uh, the top layer of your skin is dead. That's why it sloughs off. And what is it? 70 to 80% of all dust is uh, skin cells. The next layer underneath is your dermis, which is the thicker inner layer of connective tissue, blood vessels. And you see, like, this is alive. This layer here, it's got blood vessels, smooth muscle. It's got nervous tissue. It's alive, as the epidermis really isn't. You have the hypodermis, which we also call the subcutaneous layer. It's a layer underneath the dermis consisting of areolar and adipose tissue, which you will remember there from the last lecture that we just, just had just a couple of minutes ago. Um, it binds the skin to the underlying tissue so your skin doesn't fall off when you turn suddenly. Um, adipose tissue there insulates, okay, and lots of blood vessels and skin there. And we'll have a look here, okay. Here's your epidermis, okay. It's alive, but then you see the uh, stratum corneum here. It's all just dead, dead cells, okay. And it's kind of like this waxy layer that just protects from anything getting in because this is our... This is all living tissue down here, and we don't want anything there that's not supposed to be there. Next layer there is the dermis. Here we get the, uh, see the blood vessels. They only come up to here. And you remember there we were talking about um, the, the baseline membrane, baseline protein, where all the blood and nutrients comes here, and it gets filtered up through to the cells up here, okay? Um, and there's your hypodermis down here. Different layers have different things, and you'll see there that the, uh, the fat tissue, the adipose tissue here, is only found in the hypodermis there, the subcutaneous layer. And it's a, it, if you get a burn down to this layer, it, it's a bad one. It, it really is, it, it really is. So let's have a look here. So, made up of stratified squamous epithelium, it doesn't have blood vessels. So here we're talking about this layer in here, okay, the epidermis. Um, the entire body basically has four layers of skin, except for the hands and the soles of the feet that have five. And we call this thick and thin skin, <coughs> okay. So your thick skin is only found on the, uh, the um, palms of the hand and the soles of the feet. Thin skin, which is composed of four layers, is found everywhere else. Thick skin is only found on these two places, and that's composed of five layers. 
And so you have a look here. Here are your five layers. Your fifth layer is the stratum lucidium. Okay, that's only found for thick skin on the hands and the feet. But all other layers are there all over the body here. Okay, so the epidermis is important because it protects against water loss, mechanical injury, chemical injury, and microorganisms, these kinds of things. Here. Okay, so there are your five layers there. So this is the layer there that's only involved with the hands and the feet is uh, providing pr uh, protection there. So you have a look. Again, here's your five layers. There's your stratum corneum, okay, dead cells filled with keratin. But let's go back here. These cells here are just in the stratum base cell, the baseline, right, the bottom. These cells here, this is where it all starts. These guys here, they're alive. Okay, and then they get generally, they get pushed up because these guys here, you can see, they get uh, sloughed off and they turn into, uh, you know, dirt that uh, we have to sweep off the floor. Okay, but you see here that they all get pushed up here. All right, here's your stratum spinosum, the next layer here, and we start to deal with keratin. And keratin, okay. This is a protein there that uh, can make nails hard, okay? Uh, you have your stratum granulosum, okay? Up in here. And then you're, there's your stratum lucidum and your corneum. So have a look at them here. There's your dermis. And melanocytes, okay? And Merkel cells, they're involved in skin pigmentation. Let's have a look here though. Uh, the epidermis of the skin, you can see here, here we have a cartoon drawing and here we have an actual uh, picture. And you can see the same. There's your basement, mem uh, uh, basement membrane all along. And your, long, and your uh, deepest layer here of the epidermis there is your stratum base cell. Okay. And then you have your stratum spinosum. Next, there's your stratum granulosum. Here's you lucidum. This is the only difference between regular skin and thick skin is that it has this one right here. There's your stratum lucidum right in here. And then there's your stratum corneum. Okay, and you can see the reciprocal over here on the actual diagram. All right. Uh, dermal papillae. You'll see these ones. You see these finger-like projections that come up from the uh, from underneath? These are the uh, dermal papillae. These are these finger-like pro uh, projections there that just provide more surface area so that your, your skin can attach to other skin. And so your skin doesn't fly off. That's what that is, okay? Um, what do we got here? Stratum uh, germinivatum. Okay, these are the cells continuously dividing and moving towards the surface. Stratum corneum. This is your surface layer composed of dead, flattened cells that slough off. Keratin. Keratinization. The protein keratin makes skin cells hard, flat, and water resistant. Because we don't really want living cells on the outside because they're just going to get attacked. We want dead cells that are tough as nails on the outside. And that's what this uh, keratin provides. Okay? Lots of good little information in here. I like uh, I like some of these here. Um, stratum basal, okay. This is the deepest layer, single layer of cuboidal dividing cells. It is well nourished by the dermal blood vessels underneath. Connects the epidermis to the dermis, okay. Everything's got to hold on to everything else. And you'll see there dermal papillae are these finger-like projections that come up from the dermis into the base cell to make stronger connection, okay? Um, as base cell cells continually divide through mitosis, all keratinocytes are made, okay? So you'll see here, let's go back. You'll see here that these guys here, the whole process of keratinization is happening right here so by the time these guys get here basically they're dried pressed and clean so they turn into dried slabs 
of keratin. Okay. Um, thick skin, low magnification here, and it just shows you all the different layers if you haven't seen them already. Okay, and uh, this one here, this is your dermal papillae. Those are those finger-like projections that come up. Okay, but you guys can have a look at the, all these right here. Uh, what do we got here? Now we're into the dermis. Lies under, okay, lies under the uh, epidermis there, but sits on top of the hypodermis. This is where your blood vessels are. Uh, just uh, the whole, uh, whole roll of feeding everything happens here. Okay, and you can see the role there. What role does the collagen elastic fibers of the dermis play? These fibers make the dermis stretchable and strong. What accessory structures are embedded in the dermis? Well, of course, you've got the hair, the nails, certain glands. Okay, um, just little bits of information. Stretch marks occur most commonly during pregnancy or weight gain. And uh, that happens there in the epidermis, you know. So interesting there to see, even talks about sensory receptors there that detect pain. You've got nerves in this area now. You really don't have nerves there on the top of your skin. All your nerves are a down layer. So what you're actually, when you put your finger on your skin, you're really not feeling, because there's no nerves in the skin on the, the epidermis. What you're feeling is pressure you're putting pressure on the epidermis, which is then in turn puts pressure on the dermis below. So that's how your nerves feel. Because you don't really have any nerves. You don't have any nerves on the outside. Um, just another shot here. Here's your dermis. You can see what's going on here. There is lots going on. Okay. Um, dermal papillae there. Your fingerprints, funny enough, are caused by these dermal papillae. These finger projections here that come up, and there's no rhyme or reason to them. They just come up like a genetic blueprint there for you. So it's these dermal papillae that actually provide you with your own fingerprint. Okay. Uh, in this area there, we got fibroblasts, macrophages, adipocytes, blood vessels, nerve fibers, sensory receptions, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, sweat glands. Everything's going on here in this area here in the dermis. Um, please be careful what you put on your skin. Um, studies have shown that whatever you put on your skin is in your blood in a matter of minutes. So your skin, we don't think of it as porous, but it really is. Okay, so you just have to be careful. And how many times have we ever seen a rash on our skin just in a certain area where we have no idea where did I come into contact with something? Was there some something toxic? It's called contact dermatitis. And sometimes there your skin will just react badly to something there that you've touched. So just be careful what you touch, no? Now we're into the hypodermis. This is the bottom layer here where the fat was, okay? Two main rolls insulates the body from extreme temperature because you have your adipose tissue there uh, also connective tissue anchors the skin to everything else so hypodermis insulation due to the adipose tissue okay and also anchors everything down skin can absorb many chemicals there the drug delivery system uh, like people can get uh, testosterone and estrogen uh, as a cream and you just rub it onto your skin and uh, but please be careful with anything there you put on your skin um, even uh, uh, deodorant antiperspirants these kinds of things they can be troublesome to some people so just be careful skin color okay dark pigment there we've got melanin okay it's there it's secreted by the melanocytes in the epidermis okay and there are some some issues there that can arise. You've got albino, okay, vitiligo, moles can um, can uh, occur. Um, if you eat too many carrots, your skin will go yellow. True enough, I've seen it done. It's all right though; it goes away after a while, okay. 
Uh, physiological changes there. You can blush, which makes uh, your blood vessels dilate. So that's why you get a red face when somebody says something embarrassing. Okay. Uh, pathological changes. These uh, ones here, you've got cyanosis, which is poor oxygenation. You'll, you'll turn blue. Okay. Jaundice. This is where you have a uh, problem there with your liver. Your liver isn't processing things well enough. Okay. You'll go yellow. <clears throat> All right. So there's lots of them here. Have a look at them. Here are some more here. Um, melanoma, skin cancer from the epithelial cells. And you see there, um, we talked about cancer there before, and this is the whole idea of uh, mitosis, the, uh, the, the cells uh, replicating, dividing, and that DNA has got to be perfect, because if it's not perfect, then you don't have two daughter cells that are the same as the parent cell. And... You see what happens is if you're out in the sun too much, your skin absorbs too much energy and it's this energy there that can affect uh, uh, mitosis and affect the DNA replication. So uh, albi albinism, uh, disorder that affects the coloring of the skin, hair and eyes with the lack of pigment. Uh, you've got vitiligo, some melanocytes, uh, they lose the ability there to produce melanin. Uh, liver disease, jaundice, that's a big one. Tumors of the pituitary gland results in darkening of the skin. Addison's disease results in deep bronze color of the skin. Even carrots can make your skin go yellow. Cyanosis there uh, makes the skin turn blue. Uh, alopecia, hair loss can happen anywhere. And just here's some shots here of some moles that can happen. Okay. Hair color is determined by genetics. Melanin there produced by the melanocytes is uh, responsible for most hair color types and amounts of melanin are factors. Okay, dark hair contains eumelin, red hair, pheomelanin. All right, interesting there. Two different pigments, two different colors. Gene uh, genetic lack of uh, melanin causes uh, the condition there where you become albino where you're white, red eyes, okay? Um, your erector pile muscle, that's these ones here. There's actually a muscle attached to every single hair follicle. I'm just trying to see if I can find one here. There's, uh, I don't know, it's not uh, shown right, oh yeah, I guess right here. Yes, it is, sorry. And you see here, here is your erecte pile muscle. And every single hair on your arm or leg has a little muscle attachment to it. And when you get cold and you get goosebumps, where do you think that comes from? Okay, it's from those guys there. So, let's have a look. Uh, we did that one. Yes, let's move on here. Um... There's your hair functions there, detects insects, uh, protects eyes, all these kinds of things. And uh, melanin influences color. And you'll see here that hair is alive, or it once was alive. And, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, you'll see there that every hair follicle, there's a blood, there's an oxygen supply, so this is all alive. And then as the hair grows, just like skin, because hair and skin are kind of the same thing, as it grows, it dies off, right? So this is just a hunk of dead hair, okay? It's alive down here, but as it grows, all right? So just the whole idea, the uh, erecta pile muscle there is involved in goosebumps and protection, okay? And you can see there that the hair uh, is involved there in the uh, hypodermis, okay, but then stretches right up through the dermis and out into the epidermis, okay. Here's a shot of uh, some nails and the whole idea of keratin. Uh, protective covering over the ends of the fingers and toes, okay. <coughs> Consists of a nail plate covering the nail bed. Your uh, lunula is a half shape. Uh, half moon shaped structure at the base of the nail plate and this is your lanula right here you see right there okay that's where everything is alive and things are moving out from there 
As new cells are produced, older ones are pushed outward and become keratinized, exactly the same as the skin. Okay. Just another shot. And you see here, epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous level. But please notice that you have sebaceous glands and pseudoreferous glands. And we'll talk about these there a little bit. And these are your sweat glands, okay? And they're associated there with every single hair, okay? That's where your sweat comes out, okay? We've also got your sebaceous glands, all right? Which we'll get into more, all right? So you got uh, apocrine glands and eccrine glands. Let's go. So your sebaceous glands here, which are these ones, sebaceous glands, where did they go? Right here. Okay, so this is a sebaceous gland. Um, holocrine glands here, the where the entire cell is filled with a secretion and they're released. So mostly associated there with the hair follicle and function of the hair itself. Um, they secrete an oily substance, which probably some of you would know, uh, sebum. Okay, it's waterproof, moisturizes the hair shaft and the skin. So that's what these guys here are. Okay, so those are your sebaceous glands right here. It's involved in moisturizing there the skin and the hair. All right. Your sweat glands, your pseudoephorous glands, okay, uh, we also call these maraclean glands, and the secretion exits via an exocytosis. You guys all know exocytosis there. Two types of sweat glands here. We've got eccrine and apocrine, okay? Eccrine glands here, maraclean glands that release most water, more abundant type, may respond to body temperature found on the forehead, neck, and back. You also have apocrine glands, okay, which become active at puberty. Uh, they respond to fear, emotionally upset, pain, sexual arousal, uh, most numerous in the armpits and the genitalia. Sweat contains proteins and fats, which gives it that uh, kind of distinctive odor, okay? Um, let's have a look here, body temperature. Key terms, core temperature, shell temperature, thermal regulation. We'll need you guys to know all those there, okay? Just what do they mean? Heat production, you guys know metabolism. It's all the uh, uh, regulations, all the chemical reactions going on in your body there at the same time. Creates a certain body temperature. Blood disperses heat throughout the body. Most heat is produced by muscles, which we'll see more. Uh, the liver and the endocrine glands, affected by food consumption, hormones, disease, and physical activity. Um, the amount of heat is affected by all of these guys here. So, interesting there to know. Heat loss, 80% there by the skin, 20% by the lungs, okay? And you'll see there that the skin you actually lose a lot of your toxins there through the skin. Your body will try and get rid of things there through the skin. Um, have a look at that. Temperature regulation is done by the hypothalamus. He's, um, you'll ever notice there that uh, when um, like uh, elephants will flap their ears when they're hot, that's because their ears, all the blood vessels are there. And if you... Uh, there's a lot of blood vessels there, that means, and they're very close to the skin, that means that we can lose some heat here, all right? And um, so what will happen there, heat lost, dilation of blood vessels. So the blood vessels get bigger, they get closer to the skin, so therefore we can lose some heat via the skin. But if we wanna conserve some heat, like in the winter time here, you guys can have a look here, uh, shivering which we'll talk into, it's actually a, a brain function, which we'll get into. Um, the blood vessels there, they constrict, they get closer, they get smaller, and everything kind of moves towards your core because we want to keep that 
warm blood as much to the core as possible. That's why it's such a big problem in the wintertime if you fall through the ice into the zero degree water, that's why your arms and legs will stop moving very quickly. And that's why you need to get out of the water within the first minute, because after the first minute, your arms and legs will tend to not work very well because all the blood has now moved to the core and your arms and legs really don't have enough blood to move and get out of the water. So the very first minute is the most important. Uh, newborns and body temperature, uh, they'll the babies there tend to lose more heat than they produce. Um, if you ever look at a, a newborn baby, their head is about 33% the length of their body. Their head is abnormally large. That's how babies are born. All right. So therefore their head, which would normally have hair on it, but they don't have any hair generally. And so babies will lose more heat than they're making. So they need to be covered up all the time. Uh, what's going on here? Let's just get rid of this. There we go. And here's some more definitions there for you, okay? You guys can have a look at these. Uh, normothermia, fever, hyperthermia, hypothermia. You guys can have a look at these. These are your thing right here. Uh, burns, you've got first, second, and third degree burns, and you can basically see how it all goes. First degree burn, You've got a problem here with the epidermis. Second degree, now you're into the dermis. Third degree, man, you've blown off all the fat. That whole fat layer there, and that's a huge problem. You, you get a burn. Okay, a little, uh, a little first degree burn. Okay, not a big deal because the skin is still intact. You can cover it there with a Band-Aid, keep it clean. You should be good in about four to five days. But a second degree, third degree burn, it's more intense. Now you've removed an entire layer of skin, epidermis, for one thing, if it's a second degree burn, and now that skin is, has to regenerate. And the amount of time that it'll take for that skin to generate, if you don't protect your skin uh, from infection, you were not gonna make it. So there's four stages there of a wound there. Uh, stage one, the skin isn't broken, but maybe slightly red in appearance. Okay, stage two, where the wound is open and or broken, may look like a little uh, ruptured blister. Okay, stage three, the deep wound, crater-like, and down to the fat portion of the skin. You know that that's a problem. The tissue will typically have yellow-colored dead skin. There's your fat. And stage four, which is the most serious, if you can get any more serious than three, um, likely down to the muscle. And that's a big problem, even bone as well. Okay, so um, there's your uh, integ inter integumentary system, your skin system in a nutshell. And um, I apologize there for this. Uh, it'd be good to have you guys there, but you guys are going to be right in the test. So uh, if you guys have any issues, just let me know and uh, we'll get it going. We'll set up a WebEx. Thanks, guys. Be well.